Good morning everybody and welcome back to Master Tarot. Sorry, just turn that volume up. Hope that's loud enough for you. Ah, back in my spot in the window in the lounge room, which is my favourite. Thank you for joining me. Um, want to have a, a, a quick look again at a couple of... Every, every day that goes past in regards to Russia and Ukraine, there are new questions that I want to ask and hopefully... Uh, ease some minds if we can um, and just see what sort of direction is happening um, today I'll be using my gilded tarot royale which are my fairly general and standard cards um, for non-political non-family readings etc so several things I want to have a quick look at but first of all I just want to bring up something that I thought might be quite relevant and poignant at this particular time uh, just to keep in the back of your minds and it's a saying um, or it's a analogy used by Bo of the fifth column quite regularly if you haven't found Bo please do check him out um, little snippets two or three little snippets each day um, three to eight minutes long uh, very knowledgeable ex um, army contractor in intelligence and knows the heck what he's talking about. He uses an analogy, analogy about um, uh, foreign politics, which goes along the lines of um, a lot of people think that foreign politics is like playing chess. So, for example, um, we had Ukraine going into southeastern, um, sorry, Russia going into southeastern Ukraine, What's happened in retaliation is that um, the uh, Ukraine and e EU, European Union, have now established an advisory military mission, which means that they can now... So Putin's excuse was, well, he can then send uh, peacekeeping forces into these uh, separatist areas, um, and the Ukraine... EU advisory mission can now justifiably send uh, troops and forces and uh, equipment into the remaining of Ukraine. So it seems like a chess mission, uh, chess game, you make one move, I make another move, but what, how Bo put it, is much more reflective of the reality of foreign politics, and that is that foreign policy, foreign Diplomacy, foreign politics on the world stage is like a um, giant poker game where every country is at the table and they are cheating. So when I say cheating, I don't mean outright um, blatant cheating. It's bluffing. It's um, having the ace tucked up your sleeve. Um, and uh, it's having marked cards. And they also, and every other form of cheating in poker there is, but all of these can be related back to uh, real life um, foreign politics. For example, uh, the bluffing is threatening, threatening sanctions. Once the bluff, the card that has been bluffed about has been put down, so therefore the sanctions have been put in place, uh, that bluff is no longer relevant. It is not on the table, and that's why often um, uh, countries will not reveal their cards for a way to continue the analogy. That's why uh, uh, the US didn't put their sanctions in place earlier because then they would not have the sanctions card for now. So, a few things happening. Um, so, Russia has moved into the southeast of Ukraine claiming two territories which they claim are sovereign states uh, with in, which have separatists within them um, and they are and Putin in some spe particular speech has claimed that uh, Ukraine is ancient Russian lands uh, which gives them a right to uh, lay waste or reclaim U Ukraine because they're ancient Russian lands well if that's the the logic he wants to use then Perhaps Mog Mongolian might want its Russia back, uh, or Russia might want its Alaska back, or <laughs> Rome might want its um, 
Egypt back. Uh, it's just a ridiculous, ridiculous statement to justify what he's doing at the moment. China has uh, China has also issued a statement, um, not supporting Russia at all. Basically, telling them to get back out, uh, but they aren't taking sides, which is um, an understandable China's uh, view from China's point of view. But there's a few things I want to have a quick look at too. First of all, I will do an overall for Ukraine. The cards really, okay, there might be slightly different cards that come up, but the, the cards really haven't changed over the two months I've been reading. So we'll have a, just a general read on Ukraine, then I want to have a look at whether the sanctions will include uh, uh, Germany cutting off their gas supply from Russia um, or not paying and therefore the gas will be cut off. Uh, and I want to have a look at the, so the US advisories, and I, I must admit, I take my hat off a little bit to the US. In regards to this, they are releasing information to um, inhibit Putin from taking particular actions by uh, revealing beforehand or just exposing what he's done by revealing beforehand to say, we know what you're going to do. So apparently uh, the US um, has uh, come across a high target list and those are Ukrainian um, citizens who Russia wants to detain for uh, Malfius um, intent. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing can, good can come out of it really. Um, but, however, on that vein, these high target lists are nothing new. They were, uh, there were ones from the US for when they were going into Japan. There were ones in, uh, from Germany uh, when they were uh, rounding up uh, the, the Jews and the Poles. Um, the US had, if you remember going back to Iraq, playing cards uh, that they would give to the troops to, with the faces of the targets on them, etc. You know, capture or kill. Uh, but it even goes back to you know, centuries and centuries. If you were um, laying siege to a castle, your high target was the person strutting around. <laughs> giving the orders. So there's absolutely nothing new in a high target list. The US will not be releasing names. It's very possible that they're trying to get those particular people out of Ukraine uh, at this moment and they don't want to jeopardise them. So first of all, quick overall reading on Ukraine, please. Please tell me about. We know the two separatist states have been take, uh, annexed off by Russia. Um, they were fairly populated with Russian supporters. Hopefully those that are Ukraine supporters had time to leave. Um, however, the annexation is very much shades of Crimea, how Russia took hold of Crimea. They'd take one area at a time, then they would move on to the next area find an excuse to take the next zone and find an excuse to take the next zone and Crimea did not want to be under Russian rule as a general but I understand but please tell me about Ukraine tell me about what's going on in Ukraine what will happen in Ukraine please tell me about Ukraine please tell me about Ukraine looking forward to a day when I don't have to read on Ukraine because Oops, that one's trying to fly out. Things are happening very quickly. Things are happening cha chaotically and quickly. Tell me about Ukraine. What's happening now? What will happen? The majority of Ukraine. The majority of Ukraine. Tell me, no, Ukraine as a whole. Tell me about Ukraine as a whole. Tell me about Ukraine. What will happen with Ukraine? Oh, tell me about Ukraine. Oh, tell me about Ukraine. Tell me about Ukraine. 
home. Right. So the first card out is the Knight of Pentacles, which is our slow, steady, del diligent knight moving forward slowly, which may be shades of this um, taking over one section at a time, uh, which is in complete contrast to the chaotic card that I pulled out immediately. Things are just happening slow and steady can also be a mercenary card, but I'm just getting the slow and steady crossed by uh, laying a solid foundation. A solid foundation or um, not challenged by... No, yes, okay. Putin is trying to lay a solid foundation. So Ukraine is holding steady. Russia is trying to hold a so uh, have a solid foundation to justify their actions, base of the pack, the, the sword of truth, with the dove of peace. So the foundation of the reading is this powerful sword of truth. Uh, it also um, slashes through the BS. In the past, the Knight of Wands, so again we've got another white knight here. Knights are messengers, um, but also... Uh, they move steady. The Knight of Wands in this particular deck is again a slow and steady knight. He is uh, inspiring, uh, moving forward steadily despite this volcanic eruption going on in the background. And to me, this is Russia, this is Ukraine. However, it is in the past. In the crowning the reading, uh, page of swords. So uh, he is um, exposing a truth. He is bringing messages of the truth, which comes back to the information that's been put out by the US and NATO in regards to Putin's actions. But also I'm just looking at the determination on that page's face. Do not underestimate the people of Ukraine at the moment. In the short term, in the immediate future, there will be heartbreak and loss. And I'm sorry. And I've read that every time. In the short term, there will be heartbreak, loss, disappointment, despair. The external influence is Putin himself of what's going on in Ukraine at the moment. He has, a, if you have a look at this, the bloke in his toga, uh, he has a Caesar complex, a Caesar complex, uh, a Napoleon complex at the moment. Uh, I do want to read further on Putin, so we'll race through this. The internal influence on Ukraine at the moment is this uh, Queen of Pentacles, now, all queens are compassionate, respected. This one is about the practical application of domestic security and also financial security for Ukraine. So this is Ukraine's internal influences as opposed to Ukraine's current external influences. So she is, she is steadfast, she is diligent, she is... Um, unwavering and she is inspiring so again do not underestimate the people of Ukraine the hopes and fears is that this foolishness will be over that this foolishness will uh, depart on its new journey oh, he is he's not grounded on the land he's up and he's just floating he's a bit pie in the sky um, So that is the hopes and fears. It's about, but ho but the fool is also about um, courage uh, and uh, trust in moving forward. So the Ukrainian people will need all their courage and all their trust in uh, their belief in themselves. And they're hoping that this, it sounds... Uh, uh, Petty to say this foolishness, but it is, Putin is just, 
playing the fool. Okay, the uh, future outcome, we have the High Priestess. There is a hidden agenda. Putin has a hidden agenda in regards to this invasion. Uh, but this is moving on out of troubled waters. So good cards. There's no, aside from this immediate future, there are no bad cards in this spread. This is moving out of troubled waters. Uh, it will, there will be difficulty. We've got the Ten of Wands. It will be burdensome. However, if you look, um, they are somewhat precariously balanced, but he is diligently moving forward. You have the stag of strength in the background. Um, the, the lands are lush. Um, he is moving by night night time which reflects the moon in this hidden agenda um, so what we've got here is moving out of troubled waters it will be difficult in the big in in the meantime but the ten of wands is also the end of a cycle one more three of wands so what we've got here is um, uh, your ship coming in from overseas basically the international community is there to help okay base of the pack we have the knight of swords who is your um is your president you have the king of pentacles uh, and you have a call to arms and a collective awakening and boundaries being set so nothing has really changed it's going to be pretty in the meantime my heart goes out for the people the people of Ukraine but my opinion has not changed about the out the outcome it this by Putin will fail. He does not have the support of the Ukrainian people. He, uh, sorry, he does not have the support of the Russian people. The Ukrainian people do not want uh, this, uh, obviously don't want this invasion to occur. They are not welcoming. They will stand their ground. Um, they will set their boundaries and they will display amazing courage. So, Thank you for that. Um, we're supporting you in whatever way we can and our hearts go out. I want to ask next about this list. A, does it exist? And will they have an opportunity to implement it? So please tell me about this high target list that Russia apparently has. Hasn't been cited, but Oh gosh, in every conflict going back for eons, there has always been high targets. Whether it was from one tribe to another and they wanted the young women of a certain age uh, 10,000 years ago, whether it was 500 years ago when they wanted to take out the king or, or queen or lord of a castle or whatever right up to Ira Iraq Afghanistan World War one World War two you name it every conflict has a high target list so please tell me does this high target list exist this high target list exist does this high target list exist yes it is a harsh truth, but it does exist. Uh, uh, what we've got here is the two of cups that usually means relationships. Persians have turned up again. Uh, however, um, actions have consequences. The justice card. Call to arms collective awakening inevitability so it's telling me yes 
So what, what are these cards telling me? It's telling me, yes, there is a harsh truth. There is a list. There is always a list. Uh, but what I'm reading on this next line is, is the however. <laughs> um, however, Ukraine is not alone against Putin. There will be consequences for his actions. There is a call to arms, a collective awakening, and an inevitability. And this is all about an abuse of power. An abuse of power by the devil. We know who that is. <sighs> Reflecting his insecurities. Okay, so I want to have a look at the German pipeline. Will Germany... Now you've got to remember the German uh, economy is four times the size of the Russian economy. I was quite surprised at that. I didn't realise it was the Russian economy was so small uh, the way they stomp around on the world stage uh, or like to stomp around on the world stage, which is possibly why there is this insecurity on behalf of the leaders of Russia. Uh, so the German economy is four times the size of Russia. I am... Okay. The decision will be left to Germany. They will be encouraged. And the rest of the European Union will rally around because it is winter. However, we're moving into February, nearly end of February. Holy smokes, where did that come from? Uh, so it is winter in Germany. They are reliant on Russian gas for their heating. There have been some pretty severe Arctic blasts coming down uh, from Mother Earth just trying to heal herself with the movement of air. So, but what I'm being told is that the decision will be left up to Germany, but if they decide to cut off the Russian gas, remembering that 50% of Russia's exports, so the money that comes in from the rest of the world, is from their gas and oil supplies. Price of oil has gone up, obviously. So will Germany... So if you're in Germany, make provisions, please. If you, you, if you end up needing them, you'll be prepared. If you don't end up needing them, keep them aside for next year. Uh, and when I say make provisions, blankets, uh, alternative forms of heating, not quite sure what's available, um, candles, butane burners for cooking, um, just you know what you would need, you know what you would need. So please, if you are in Germany that would be affected if the Russian gas was cut off, please take precautions. I'm not saying it's a yes, it, the decision will be down to the, to the Germany, German leadership and people, but please tell me will... Germany cut off the gas from Russia as part of a sanctions. Uh, oh, look who's turned up again. Shuffled relentlessly. United of Swords, harsh truth. Please be prepared. I'll read further on this, but I'm seeing it is a, this is Putin's complete and utter downfall. If Germany decides to go through with it, it is Germany's complete and utter downfall. However, knights mean truth, logic, research. Um, it also can mean uh, air, um, but I'm seeing this in regla regards to logic and research. This is signifying an end of an era. Tens are an end of an era. And this may 
prompt the end of reliance on Russian gas by Germany. Abuse of power. Okay, this is about Putin, uh, King of Wands. We. This is the lawmakers. This is the. Um, this is the Ukrainian leader, visionary, empowering, uh, honourable. Heartbreak and balance. So let's see what this is telling us. So the question was, will uh, Germany cut off the gas? Uh, harsh truth, very possible. Please be ready. This will mean the downfall, the end of the abuse of power. Uh, you've got this Ukrainian leader. He will mourn the loss but we will be coming into a rebalancing and th this has been moderation, grounding, rebalancing. Base of the pack is again the two of cups, the world coming together, coming together. Okay, uh, very quickly, we're up to 26 minutes already. Did contemplate very quickly whether to do this as a, um, a separate reading, but I'll pop it on the end here. Putin's health. There are rumours about Putin's health. Uh, that the reason why he is being so erratic is that he has Parkinson's d disease. Now, uh, a side effect of Parkinson's disease does not mean that everybody has it, uh, has this side effect, but a side effect of Parkinson's disease can be. Uh, delusion, irrationality, and then apparently Putin underwent emergency surgery earlier this month. Uh, this is according to sources in Russia, not verified obviously, so uh, it is for entertainment purposes only, that he is suffering from uh, inoperable, well no, he's had emergency surgery so it was operable, but uh, terminal cancer. So I just want to ask the question on those two, the Parkinson's, if he, if he is being irrational through, his delu through delusion, then that would explain that side of things, and if he does have terminal cancer, it would explain why he's taken this action recklessly for recklessly um, and rapidly because if he had 10 years up his sleeve he would just bide his time like he did with Crimea and work through his deviousness but if he feels he's running out of time then perhaps that's why he's uh, rushed in so please tell me Entertainment purposes, entertainment and spiritual purposes only. First of all, tell me about Putin's health. Tell me about Putin's health. Ooh. Threw out at me. Uh, disappointment and loss. So quickly, and base uh, star was there as well. The star is about hope, respite. So perhaps Putin's health will lead to a respite of this behaviour. Okay, so tell me about Putin's health. Tell me about Putin's health. Overall Putin's health. Tell me about Putin's health. I did notice he is looking very puffed up. Which is not like, yes, he feels like he's running out of time. He feels like he's being held hostage by his body. Um, so Putin always used to pride himself on being this, you know, riding the horseback naked. Well, not naked, but naked from the waist up. Um, 
etc etc being the man's man the macho man but i have noticed recently he has been very bloated for want of a better word uh so eight of swords is the signifier clarifiers are the end of a cycle he is reaching the end of a cycle in regards to his time in russia and then we've got the Page of Pentacles, which is bringing forward a message. The Nine of Swords, he is anxious about, and he's, um, he wants to go back to better times. But the truth is it can't happen. Can't go back. Oh, the base of the pack, still got that disappointment card hiding there despite having shuffled. So, um... Yeah, he's feeling trapped uh, by his body and he's feeling like he's running out of time and he wants to go back to how things, he wants to leave a legacy of how things work, were and the truth is saying that's what he wants to do. Okay, tell me does, Does Vladimir Putin have Parkinson's disease? Now, Parkinson's disease takes on many forms. Does not mean that uh, you necessarily have the shakes. Um, apparently, he is due to... He is extremely fearful of catching COVID, which is interesting because one would assume he would be triple, quadruple, however many vaxxed. Um, but apparently he is, that's why the really long tables at the negotiations, he is very fearful of catching COVID. And I wonder if it's because, okay, I'll ask first. wonder if it's because, and the, the bloating is because he's undergoing uh, treatment for cancer. Does Vladimir Putin have terminal cancer? Please tell me, Meister. Does Vladimir Putin have terminal cancer there's too many cards that fell out there does Vladimir Putin have terminal cancer please tell me master does Vladimir Putin have terminal cancer ah oh, yes card karma is coming to bite it means, it means karma, but it also means um, endings and beginnings as one side gains, another loses. It is the end of a cycle. It is the closing of a chapter and the starting of a new chapter. It is very much a yes card and it is advancing rapidly. He's struggling with the emotion of it all. And uh, he's leaving, leaving stage left. He is given. He is receiving help for it, but there is a is a message coming forward in regards to this base of the pack. <laughs> We've got our harsh truth again. So, yes, he does, is what I'm seeing, entertainment purposes only. Parkinson's disease, so yes, he, he does have terminal cancer, and yes, he is receiving treatment for it, that's telling me. Tell me about, does Putin also have... I'm just getting this overwhelming feeling that he feels he is running out of time. Entertainment purposes only. Tell me, does Putin also have Parkinson's disease? Does Vladimir Putin have Parkinson's disease? These four cards getting all dog-eared. I shuffle them rather roughly. Oops. Uh, uh, yes, he's at a crossroads. 
Putin have Parkinson's disease? Please tell me, Master, does Putin have Parkinson's disease? He is at a crossroads. Does Putin have a Park Parkinson's disease? Oh! So what have we got? Six of Wands usually means success or victory riding into town. He is being successful at hiding it. Does Putin have Parkinson's disease? Just please tell me. Entertainment purposes only. Does Putin have Parkinson's disease? Uh, another yes card. Very much yes. And another yes card. She's... Um, she is the card of perception and wielding the sword of truth. So we've got two wands which are about passion and messages. So we've got the two messages cards and the truth cards. So again, base of the pack, another version of him moving on. He's feeling under attack, challenged. Uh, he is experiencing loss. There is an offer being made to him in that he can make his final years more comfortable, but he's ignoring that offer. He's looking at, this is why he's feeling desperate. He's looking at what is not available to him at the moment. Uh, and the message we messages we are getting are all full of lies and deceit and misinformation, disinformation, um, thief in the night, basically. But that also that thief in the night is telling me that this Parkinson's disease is stealing away uh, Putin's ability. Okay, thank you for joining me. Sorry it went on for so long. Um, I, Unless something really, well, all of it's really dramatic, um, but unless something different from what I have read on uh, comes to light, um, I won't be doing another reading on Ukraine at the moment. Um, and if I do, if it's something like the, the Germany's decision to stop the gas, I shall just read on that rather than an overall. Okay, thank you for joining me. Um, love, light, <sighs> strength goes to those in that area, all of Europe. So please look after yourselves. Take care. And if I remember correctly, I did a reading on, I think it was Norway not that long ago. Or the Scandinavian regions and it did warn me that there would be um, something fearful coming out of Russia. That was about four months ago I think before Ukraine was even on the cards so uh, thank you for joining me, uh, thank you for subscribing and take care. Bye bye.